Hi Chris, welcome and uh, thank you so much for um, for accepting my invite to, to get in here. And uh, yeah, so if you want to start out, just like introduce a little bit and just let people to know who you are and uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, so hi, my name is Chris. Uh, I have a YouTube channel called CodeChris.com. Uh, I'm a web developer, uh, self-taught. And uh, you know, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me, Zelmo. Uh, it's it's good to be here. Um, I'm excited to do this. It's it's been hard with the whole time zone difference getting getting yeah. the, the time work. <laughs> so, so so yeah, like like, like I said, uh, you you were one of the first uh, YouTubers that I started to follow in this um, web developer community on YouTube. There is still not a, a big uh, community. There is still not a lot of people. So you were one of the first ones that started these as well. And that's why I wanted to have you in my in my channel, and yeah, so it's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, yeah, thank, thanks a lot. So um, I, I wanted to ask you now. So can you just like let us know how did you start your your journey into web development? Uh, like uh, how, how did it all started? Sure. Yeah. So I mean, everybody's story is a little bit different. Um... So for me, it's it's kind of weird because I, I definitely never thought I'd be getting into code at all. Like mm -hmm. if you asked me a couple of years ago, um, my background actually comes from animation. I did computer animation, motion graphics, that kind of stuff, and uh, worked for myself for a really long time, actually. Um, things started changing with the way the market was working and just the industry, and I, I started to... You know, I, I was I was engaged, and we were thinking about family, and like I'm thinking about like the future, wow. five, ten years out, and stuff. And so, at a certain point, um, I realized I had to start changing careers somehow. And I looked into code, and at the time, like, you know, coding boot camps were starting to become a thing. So, and so when when did you start it? I would say it depends on who you ask. Um, I would say my my journey kind of started like three years ago. And the reason I say that is um, I kind of figure it after like I got married. That's when I started to be like, nope, got to gotta get something serious. So <laughs> right. I would say I would say like the journey started. So like about almost about three years ago, maybe a little less was when I'm like, you know what? I, I am going to commit myself to this code thing and, and make this my future. So because up until then, like it was really, really hard for me because I was trying, I was basically making a career change. So since like I was like a little kid, I wanted to do nothing but character animation, nothing but motion graphics. Like, like that's what I like my passion was. And for me to like relinquish the, you know, my, my old career, because what I was doing is uh, I was taking on clients, but work was getting like more difficult. You gotta invest more time to get the client, and prices were you know having to drop because of the competition and stuff. So, and so I'm like, you you were working on animation at mm -hmm. the time, but by, by yourself, like your own company. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had my own company called Marlow Animation. It's a sole proprietor. It was a sole proprietorship, and you know basically people could to me about whatever, and I'd make explainer videos. Um, I would, uh, I've done some like little animations for like uh, an app um, for uh, another company. Um, I did some video game work uh, for like uh, some Nickelodeon, Nick like, Jr. stuff. So it was pretty cool. Like I, I really enjoyed what I did. But like I said, like the, the way the industry is changing, it, it really wasn't like I'm looking at it like in the future and I was like, you know, I can stay in this, I can survive. But essentially like it's going to take more of my personal time like away from my family uh, the the pay isn't going to be as high like you're, you're fighting for more you're fighting more for less yeah exactly. so something long term and that's kind of when i i somehow i don't know exactly how it happened i just remember that i i like i was investigating things industries that were changing that were growing coding looked like the future and i was like yep yeah, i'm not smart so anyways i can my friend somehow mentioned code academy i checked out code academy and I think that's kind of like the moment that I'm like, okay, I think I can do this. And then I went to the library, got a book, big JavaScript book. And, um, you know, since then, it's been a journey of just learning, you know. Yeah. I, and, I was going to do a book. Yeah, so. And this is something <laughs> that, like, uh, that people, oh, they, they just think uh, about like all the time. Like you need, you need to be a genius to, uh, to get into web development. People, they say, oh, I need, to, I need to know a lot of maths or I need to know a lot about these and that. 
and you know you you really have to start like from the basics and you you don't have to be a genius to become a web developer you know and of course the more and more years of experience you get the better and better you get so yeah yeah i mean that's probably like the one thing i i did not expect because yeah exactly that man i totally thought okay because i have a friend who, who's a software engineer and he is very very smart and you know he's doing, and he's doing, uh, you know, he knows C, and he programs with C sharp, and all this other stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And the first time you see code too, like regardless of the language, it looks like gibberish to you, yeah, right? Exactly. It's all just like, what are these symbols doing here? What is if? What, what what's going on? Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely thought had that mentality in the beginning, and I think at least for me, I I, I try to think of two things, and I still to this day, try and think of it, which is, um, one, you know, before the internet, people were teaching themselves how to code. So that means that theoretically, or actually literally, um, you should be able to learn everything you want from a book, you know? And two, right now there, it, we do have the internet. We do have videos. We do have just tons of resources at our fingertips. We have Stack Overflow, you name it. So and many Google. Free, free resources. That free people, resources. Yeah. And, and just fast and so much of it. So my, my thinking was, was like, hey, people did it before the internet. And, and a lot of, you know, especially back then, a lot of people were self-taught. So I was like, there's no reason that, you know, I can't, I can't learn. There's no reason you can't learn anything. And so that's kind of been nice too because, as you know, with this field, you're always learning. You're always reading new stuff. Things are always changing. So... Exactly. So it, it's it, it's good, especially, and then I kind of realized too, teaching myself, you, you kind of get really good at finding stuff, because the reality is, is you're yeah. gonna need to. Find stuff. <laughs> no, no, no one is gonna do it for you if you don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So uh, yeah, so um, um, one thing that uh, a lot of people ask, it's like when you are starting out, you know. When do you know that you know enough to get a job? When, when, when was your point that you said, okay, I started to learn, I got this book, like you said, uh, from the JavaScript library, and you start to reading, and you start to go to Code Academy and stuff. When was the time that you felt like, right, okay, I'm ready now for a job? It took you a long time, or how was the process for you? Sure. Um, so, so, so the... the this is kind of how it worked. So once I decided, okay, I'm going to learn this code thing or whatever, and then I found out there were like the things like code camps, and I was like, huh, so three months, I should be able to do it. Well, if I do it on my own, I don't spend the money. How long is that mathematically? And anyways, what I just ended up doing was I, I started learning, like I said, but while I was learning, um, essentially just building my own little tools and finagling, and I knew it was going to take me some time. Well, as far as when I was ready, I just kept finagling and, and tweaking stuff and just building little little things. Uh, like I, at the, one of the first things that I did was like uh, build like a a car comparison thing because I needed to like choose between cars. And I was just figuring out like just, I'm like oh I'm learning this. Let me go ahead and just practice. Mm -hmm. And anyways, so what ends up happening is I would say you're, you're not you're never really ready. What I did is I just started applying. Um, I I was like, you know what? I know the the very basic. I I can, I built I built a a stupid tool. It functions. It works. Therefore, if somebody can take me in, and just you know work with me, and apparently I was reading people like are self taught. People learn a lot on the job. If I can just get in there and show potential, uh, I'll I'll be in. Um, so what ended up happening, though, is I ended up getting uh, a different job where they found out that I was interested in code, but it wasn't about code. Mm -hmm. um, but there was opportunity for stuff. And so I did um, VB Script for a little bit because they had these Excel tools that they, this guy had built for them, mm -hmm. and a lot of them were broken. And so what ended up happening is I taught myself VB Script while on the job, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's just a syntax change, which... It's not, but, um, but yeah, so I basically taught myself that, and then it was, it was good just kind of practice just being in the field working with code. After about a year or so, year, maybe a year and a half there, 
meanwhile, I would say after about a year of me coding in the background, because right. I was working a full-time job and stuff, um, after about a year of me coding in the background, that's when I started like, okay, you know what? I, I feel pretty good about, about you know, front end at least. So let me go ahead and start applying. And then I just started applying nonstop. You know, I didn't always get callbacks. Um, recruiters ended up calling a lot, but they'd be like, oh, I see you're interested in, yeah, 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 in programming. Exactly. It's, like, it's like we have a C-sharp position for you. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, wow, well, I, I don't much. do C-sharp or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's really Yeah, so difficult. I would say as far as, yeah, I would say as far as like when you're ready, you're never really ready. It's just if if you can build a tool, no matter how like mediocre or how, does it function or does it work? At that point, start applying. And the reason I also say that too is because the application process, even if you do know what you're doing, because I just came out of this, even if you do know what you're doing, it takes a long time and, and you get busy and stuff. So it could take a few weeks, a few months to, uh, to, to get a, a job that's either a good fit or that will even like willing to take you, especially in the beginning. I mean, the thing was, especially exactly. in the beginning, you know, a lot of people were like, the number one thing I got was like, Oh, we're really excited for you, but you know, we're gonna go with somebody with more experience. We're gonna go with somebody with more experience. Like that's the main thing you get. Yeah. So, so uh, just just keep applying. <laughs> yeah. So um, how was how was like the um, the process of your interviews? Did did you go to a lot of interviews? Um, how were your interviews? Did they have like a lot of technical questions, or was just like something more informal questions about yourself, or how was it? Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, so in regards to what I've 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 gathered, uh, I just got a new job, and for my first job, there's a lot of similarities. So, what usually happens is, um, and I don't know if things are different over there, but over here in the states, my experience has been that you normally first have a, you know, you do your application. Um, they might uh, call you by um, they they might call you by phone. That's usually the first thing. They kind of get a vibe, like, what's your experience? You know, what are you interested in? What are you looking at for salary? A lot of those sort of general broad right. questions and, and, you know, what technologies. And usually with that, you're usually speaking with somebody in HR, uh, somebody who may or may not be that familiar with code at all. And in some cases, I've actually had quite a few HR people who have been given sort of preliminary filters, uh, filter questions from from the uh, from the team, so they might say like, "Oh, could you describe, you know, uh, you know, what a table is, or something like that, right?" Just some some like silly stuff, right. and that's just kind of to be like, "Okay, does he even does he even know what he's applying for?" Kind of stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> exactly. yeah, so I would say you first get the phone call interview, and that's with the HR person. Then, if that goes well, they'll take your resume and they'll bring it to whoever's in charge. And that person's in charge, you might have a second phone call interview uh, or, yeah, you'll have a second phone call interview most of the time. And that's uh, a phone call interview where they're getting a little bit more specific, maybe a few technical questions. Mm -hmm. And with those more technical questions, they see how you do. And then what ends up happening is you'll eventually have the face-to-face -face interview. So you'll have one phone and then you'll have at least one, maybe two phone interviews, and then you'll get the face-to-face -face interview. At the point you're at the face-to-face -face interview, you're you're one of the higher candidates, and that's kind of been my experience in any in the other field too. Once you're face-to-face, -face, you're kind of like one of the final candidates. They're, they're you seriously one considered. step ahead, like to to getting hired. Yeah. Yeah, and the and the reason I think about that too is if you're at the face-to-face -face interview, um, it, it's it's good to think of it in regards to you are wasting people's time. You know, if they're bringing in the HR lady, the front end developer, and the head of, you know, uh, engineering or whatever, like if they're bringing in people, that's that's time and resources that the company's using to look at you, which means you're a serious candidate. Uh, so you know, at least be if you don't get the job, like be happy, know that like okay, your skill set's there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, so yeah, um, an another question is. Um, there's a, a lot of people asking this as well is like how much javascript you need to know like for your first job because people they think they have to be javascript genius like for your first job you need to know so much or whatever so how was your skill like on your first job and um, what what do you think people they should know about javascript be, before they get like into their first job 
Yeah, so so you're going to see all these applications, and they say things like, must have 10 years experience in React, right. 10 years experience in Angular. And I even like was reading that too, and I was like, wait, this hasn't even been out that long. But, you know, what are they saying? So, um, and, and, you know, you can apply for, for anything that says junior position. I figured in my mind, like, they, they already know you're at a lower skill set, so there's that. Um, but you can also just apply for anything that doesn't say senior. If it just says web developer, front end right. engineer, whatever, like just that's fine. You yeah, know, they I, don't care. I, I agree. I agree with that. Um, what I would say, though, in regards to uh, that, JavaScript specifically, you honestly, for your first job, if you just know JavaScript, like plain vanilla JavaScript, um, and you're comfortable, once again, just building a tool, building something, then you're you're good to go. Um, you know, the, most companies, uh, it depends on the company, most companies, you know, use a lot of jQuery. Mm -hmm. But upon my research, when I, when I was starting, I was like, I was like, okay, what, what's, what the heck is jQuery? Okay, that seems to be like everybody's go-to for everything. But then I found out that, you know, a lot, a lot of criticism from people, specifically for new developers, was, hey, don't do, don't do jQuery if you don't know JavaScript yet because you'll get confused or you don't know why it's working under the hood. And right. so, so what I would say is, you know, by all means, learn jQuery, but first, learn JavaScript, learn how things work under the hood. You don't need to know everything JavaScript. You need to know how to write a function, how to write conditionals. You need to know, essentially, just um, how to problem solve. You don't need to know everything perfectly, right? You don't have to understand recursion to a T. You don't have to understand <laughs> exactly. um, all these algorithms. So, there's so, like, so, so everyone is just like trying to say that, oh my god, I don't know this, I don't know that. Like, they, they think they have to know like the ins and outs of uh, JavaScript like when they are starting out because uh, basically like w when you are starting out they know that you don't know everything and um, you're going to learn most of the stuff in the actual work you know like because you're going to be building there much more stuff and you're going to be learning and they know these when they are hiring you yeah and and, and that's the thing too is you know um one thing as and even now like one thing, like because I just started applying to places, it, it was funny because I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I saw you guys like use Angular. I'm not familiar with Angular like at all." Oh, that's fine. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll end up teaching you if we have to. Like it's not a big deal as long as you can learn. Exactly. And that's interesting too because the the one thing when I got my first job that they even said, it you know because at some point I was working on like. Uh, you know, I was working on something, and they said basically like the one thing they really liked was that I was passionate. They could tell I was passionate about the code, and that I definitely was learning and willing to learn, mm -hmm. because I think that's probably the, the biggest component. Because even you know, if if you don't know everything JavaScript, that's fine. I don't even know everything JavaScript right now. Like I'm still looking up stuff. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's a built-in function. I can use that. Like I didn't even know that was a thing. So. Uh, but the thing is, is as long as you c can know enough to kind of beat around the bush, right? If you can make, make the, um, if I tell you I need this to appear on the screen, if you right. don't know the best way of doing that, it's fine. But do you know how to do it? Because once you're in the working environment, you'll learn the best way of doing it. You'll learn the better way of doing it. Exactly. But the point and, is, is and, and can you accomplish it? Yeah, and since, since you, you don't know everything, that's, that's completely normal. This is part of the uh, a way of a developer. You know, you have to be lear learning on the fly. So you can just like go to Google and, okay, now I want to do this. So let me just like research. And while you're trying to build something, you will learn as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. And Google, Google's your friend. So that's that's kind of the truth too. I, I think at one point I uh, actually was taking one of the tests, and I even told them uh, like they like left the room so I could take the test. And I even said, so so question with some of these questions, uh, can I use the internet? Because <laughs> because I mean in the work and I even said that like well in the work environment I'll have access to the internet, you know. So and they're like. Yeah, I, do whatever you want, man. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. If, if it makes sense, like whatever tools you have. Exactly. On, in my, the real world. on my uh, first um, interview for a front end position, they told me exactly the same. It's like, uh, tell me, just feel comfortable. You know, uh, if you want to use uh, Google or anything, you can use because at work we are constantly like researching things in there. So they said, yeah, you, you can just look whatever you want. 
and that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and that's that's the truth. I would say you know, you I I always have like a browser window like I toggle between. It's like oh, hang on, okay, good. <laughs> you know, and you're you're always gonna be you know just picking up a better way of doing things. And then like I said, like you you will learn better practices when you're there. Mm-hmm. You'll work with other developers, and so as long as you can get get by, you know enough JavaScript, and you will learn more. So exactly. and and once again, if you're willing to learn, that's probably the most important thing. Um, and if you show you can learn, um, I think also being if you're self-taught, um, you you have, I think uh, a bigger a bigger opportunity because when you're self-taught, you also learn how to learn. Mm-hmm. You know exactly. So and, like and being then you learn faster. Yeah. Yeah, you, you learn faster. You learn how to how to debug, right? You learn how like you, you have to learn how to debug because there's nobody else around, right? <laughs> so yeah. you learn how to debug pretty quick. You learn how to find things online, you know, like like sometimes you get into like really specific things, right? Where you're like there's I have a unique situation that nobody's had before. Oh no, somebody else had this issue before. Hang on. You know, and yeah, you can yeah, use yeah. that. Exactly. So um so um in your first job that you got as a web developer, what um, what 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 you were doing exactly in there? Because uh, people they, they, they that they are trying to get in their first position, you know, they still don't know exactly what a web developer does because there is many kind of specializations. Some uh, web developers they will specialize in uh, landing pages. Some of them like conversion rate optimization, like I did in my first job, and you know, it's so many different things that you can do. So. Uh, what, what you were doing in your uh, first job? Sure. Uh, so every once again, every job is different. And so mine was a, uh, so my first job was a smaller company. Okay, very small team. Um, so we we built a lot of websites, and it was for smaller companies. Well, some companies were pretty big, but um, in, in general, the, the, uh, our team was pretty small. So we I got the opportunity to kind of delve my hands into a lot of things. Right. So a lot of the websites that we built uh, were, were built from scratch, and we were actually developing uh, some of them on ASP.NET and some of them on WordPress. Mm-hmm. And I came into the job not knowing how to WordPress works as a developer. Like I didn't even know that was a, a possibility. Um, so I had to learn that on the job, and I didn't know PHP, so you learned that on the job also. Once again, as long as you're willing to learn, exactly. you, you can learn on the job. So, but anyways, so what I got to do, you, you do a lot of everything, um, especially if you're in a smaller company, you're going to do a lot more of everything. So, for example, um, I did a little bit of SQL, but very minor. Um, I did uh, a lot of HTML, a lot of CSS, a lot of PHP, um, a lot of WordPress, because that kind of goes coincides there, mm-hmm. um, and, um, you know, a good amount of JavaScript. Uh, that was just unique to us that for the purposes of what I was doing, like I didn't get to do as much JavaScript as I would have liked. But in normal circumstances, I think you'd probably do just a little bit more. But majority of your time is going to, especially being your first job, they're going to put a majority of the workload on the visual markup and CSS. Right. So you would definitely will have some JavaScript. It just won't be like 90% of your thing, you know. It'll it'll really be like, oh, hey, um, we need this. Uh, we need this. Like, like we, we need this. Um, sorry, this this div to appear when you know shipping for this thing is selected. Okay, cool. Make sure it's styled nice, and right. make sure you know. Like that's gonna be a lot of a lot of the kind of stuff you'll be doing. It won't be anything super super crazy. Um, and then of course you have things that are not coding related. You'll have things like, oh, well, can you update the content on this page? Can you update you know some text and <laughs> right. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you'll you'll also have some some just some bug tickets, right? So you have live tickets. So websites that are already built, already established, mm-hmm. you'll build websites. Um, but then also, as far as live tickets, it's like a website's already built, the code's already there, and you know for some reason they're realizing that um, you know uh, the 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 logo has been updated. So you gotta like. Go in and change the logo, but it turns out that it's a different dimension. Yeah, so, so you need now, to style it accordingly. So now you need to yeah. kind of you know move things around, and that that's that's the kind of stuff that you'll you'll get a lot of, where it's it's 
small changes like that. I think it's always funny too with, with the live tickets is sometimes you'll get like a ticket where it sounds super straightforward, right? Like this should be five minutes, right? Exactly. And it's something like I said, like, oh, like, we'll just go ahead and just change, change the logo. Yeah. Oh, all right. Fast. Next so, thing you so, know, it's so like... They just ch- send you a logo with the, the dimensions like completely different. And it, yeah, like it, it's a square and that's like a long it, rectangle. It breaks the style completely. And then they say, oh, it's just changing the logo. And then you are like, okay, now I need to change this completely because this is breaking the layout. I'm trying to put this on mobile or a tablet and it's responding completely differently. So <laughs> it's not like just five minutes. Yeah, it's it's funny too, like, because um, like sometimes there'll be something that's like, oh, well, you know, we, we want to add, like we had a this example from a, a client where, you know, we had built this header because at the time they had like five things specifically they wanted in that header, right? They wanted five things in that navigation menu. It was, it was perfectly divided up, aligned. The size was all the specs and same thing with mobile, all that stuff. And there was a certain design to it. Then they ended up, and they had really long titles, really long, really long navigation words, and um, then they wanted to add in this extra one, which like broke everything. Like Breaks it, everything it went to a new exactly. line, and, that, and then it's like ah, uh, and then of course you're like, you know, uh, adapting for like uh, the tablet. I hate the tablet. The the, the tablet is like <laughs> the worst because it's like navigation, uh, mobile's straightforward, desktop is straightforward, and then once you get to that. Middle that side, iPad, yeah. it's yeah. iPad. It's like, oh, why, you know? So, so. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> uh, how much, how much do you think that you you progressed? Like, since you started on your uh, first job, like, and until the end of your first job, how much do you think that you progressed? You know? Uh, a lot, a lot. So, and the funny thing too is, a lot of what I learned isn't so much. I mean, yes, I did learn obviously the programming side. I did learn how to get really good at, at, at styling and, and markup and, and better practices. So that that was really like a lot of icing that just kind of happened through osmosis and through mm-hmm. through my peers. But I think a lot of what I also learned that that you just can't get until you're on the job is you learn a lot about a lot of the normal boring hiccups that you're going to end up having, right? I'm talking about like configurations not working, uh, you know, uh, local server side caching going on, um, just just a lot of the normal, not even code related issues you're gonna come across. That you're like, well, well why isn't this working? And you you kind of learn about the ins and outs, uh, and you learn like some fun facts about you know whether it's like related to servers right. or how um, or how like the browser reads stuff. Um, all, all that kind of stuff is, I think probably the most valuable thing that I, I learned. Um, but obviously being there, I definitely did learn. Um, like, I, I've, I, I kind of like from from there, being a smaller company, you can only learn so much with the team. Right. So I, I, I feel like I, I kind of like reached this plateau where like in the beginning, I was just, oh my gosh, there's so much I'm learning and just all this stuff. <laughs> and and it, was, it was great. I loved going into work and just, exactly. just absorbing all this new knowledge. At a certain point, I was like, you know what? I've I'm, I've kind of absorbed all that knowledge. I'm kind of, yeah. kind of getting now slowing you, down. Now you are not getting anything new for yourself or for the company. So it's just like, wow. Now yeah, it, it, you just you just kind of and you'll know too because you kind of feel slow down because there was a time where I'm just like, oh man, okay, this is taking me more than you know a few minutes. Like I I better uh, I spend an hour on this and you know especially in the beginning like you're super self conscious yeah, right because yeah, you're yeah. thinking I am being judged. I, you know, they are they are they are evaluating. Okay, do we make a good decision hiring this guy? So you want to do like a good job. Exactly, exactly. So. And, and and were you afraid like in the beginning when you started out like, oh, I'm gonna mess everything up. I'm gonna break everything and, uh, or or you yeah. Was, and, and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it was it was nice. The people I work with are all very very cool, and you know they even said to me like, uh, don't worry if you if you. Pull down the, if you break the website. You know it's happened before. We've had people like delete a whole website. You know, <laughs> like we have redundancies in place, so if we need to, you know, whatever. And so that's one thing I definitely got much more. You definitely get much more comfortable doing things like, you know, on the live site, right? Like this is available to thousands and thousands of people. Exactly. You know, this is, and this is and something you get used to like, we are okay, like afraid. Push, it's, yeah, like in the beginning, it's like okay, I'm I'm going I'm going live. We ready? 
it's fine. Just, just, just commit it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, o o obviously, this is like really important, like for everyone who's starting out, because they are always afraid that, uh, oh, I, I always mess everything up. I'm afraid that uh, I'm gonna break the website completely. So this was always a, 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 I was afraid of that as well when I was starting out. So I, I would just like back up all the code before I just like put my hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> just in case I was going to break everything and sometimes it happened, you know, and, and this kind of thing saved. So, um, yeah. So, um, you, no. you kind of did where that, one of that thing where like, you like, all right, just copy all, all the, just copy everything. You put it into like, like a, a notepad plus plus, exactly. you just drop it in all exactly. of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So you, you got into this uh, first job and, um, in some of your recent videos, you talked about some, how you you were looking like for now um, a second job, something that would uh, help you like uh, working remotely, yeah. So um, how how easy was it or how hard was it to to get this uh, new job like working remotely? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> so this so this, this so yeah. As you mentioned, this uh, I'm going to start be starting uh, in November. My 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 first you know, real second job, or I guess, I guess be my new job, but my second one in the field. Right. And, um, so, so, uh, I have a, uh, uh, I have a son now. And one of the things that's important to me is, is just flexibility on schedule. And, um, you know, uh, some remote time would be nice, but that's like the most important thing is that the ability to just kind of choose better hours. Mm -hmm. And, um, so anyways, so th as far as, what I did is I basically figured it like this. I was like, you know what? I've got enough experience under my belt and um, I've been learning on my own. I've been doing this stuff. Like I should be able to find a job that works exclusively remotely um, or at least offers some sort of flexible hours. Um, currently where I work, like it's, it's a very, very much nine to five. You're in it or sorry, well, eight, eight to five. So you're in at eight, you're out at five. You have to take an hour lunch exactly at uh, 1230. You have to. So, um, and that for me is very rigid. So, so, so is, it, is it a company like based in the US? Do you need to go sometimes to the office or they are like completely far away from it, you or how it does depends, it work? It depends on the company. So that's, that's the thing. And that's, so in the industry, every company is different. Some companies are, are you know, once again, big or small, they have different benefits and, and, and uh, cons. Uh, my company specifically, the way they like their work style is they like everybody in there. They like everybody having lunch together. They like everybody like with this, this sort of format that they've designed. Um, other companies, uh, you can work remote half the week or all the week. Mm -hmm. um, you can come into the office once in a while. The new company I'm working at, uh, they they're a little bit different. They well, one they're like ten minutes away from me, so that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> so <laughs> very close. Um, very close. They have flexible uh, starting and ending hours. They have like a, a core core time, mm -hmm. but flexible beginning and end. And um, I think uh, they said after a year, I'm actually allowed to work one day a week remotely. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. And um, yeah, so so every company is different though, and I don't know how it is over there. At least in the states, from the other developers I've met, everybody's situation is a little bit different, and um, it just it just kind of depends on the company as far as what they will and will not allow with flexibility. Um, the other thing too to remember, is especially in the beginning when you get your first job, you're not concerned about that at all. Right. Like your focus when it's your first job is just I need to get in the door. Right. Yeah, this is the uh, most important thing, you know. As uh, the most difficult part is really just like getting your foot in the door, you know, get your first job because you are coming without any commercial experience, you know, and you don't have anything to back up other than just like your portfolio or something. But if you have your foot on the door and your first job, like with commercial experience, it changes everything. And after it's much easier to get your second job. Yeah, I mean, that, that was my train of thinking, man. That, that was exactly uh, my train of thinking was that, okay, the first job is gonna be the hardest, but the second job, or you know, if I had stayed there longer, I was like, well, maybe I'll stay here forever. But um, but the second job, I figured that's where you you really want to start making those kind of decisions of like, what do I look for in a company? What do am I really sort of looking for as far as you know, pay benefits and you know, uh, flexibility, those kinds of things that are that are actually important to you because now you actually have experience. Because like I said, the number one thing you'll get the most 
the most hit back on is you don't have any experience or any working experience, you know. Right. Right. So yeah, the second job was was I tell you what, it was a lot easier to get those those next stage interviews. Uh, mainly because they're like, oh, cool, you already have a, you already have a, some experience here. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, I, I felt like I felt like they literally just were checking something off. Exactly. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, let's put them on the next round. So and and so for that reason, I was a little bit more, I a little bit, I was much being much more selective about, um, you know, I don't want to just get like whatever is available anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm kind of done with that. I want to actually choose where I work. And um, I don't have the, the buying power yet of somebody who's like been in the industry for several years, but you know I I I'm, I've worked a little bit so that I should be able to at least choose a place. You know exactly. So so you you really don't need to go any time to the office or anything. You can just like work 100% like remotely. Uh no no no. This, so this this one particularly um it's it's not 100% remote. Um, they, like I said, the reason I made the exception for this one is because they are 10 minutes away and because they have flexible hours. Right. So otherwise what I was looking for was initially something that was hundred percent remote. Um, one thing I did find though, in regards to, cause I found like websites where they, they show exclusively remote, uh, exclusively remote jobs. And the one thing that I will say is, um, I think my skill set does need to be a little bit higher to get those exclusively 100% remote jobs mm-hmm. because I, what I did notice is a lot of them had very advanced JS patterns or um, algorithm questions that I was not expecting. Right. And you know, and I think the thing is too is like they just want to know like that you know if you're working remote 100%, you you won't have as much ability to work with your peers mm-hmm. as easily. So I think they want to make sure you're at a, a certain level. So I would I would say maybe maybe another year or or so um and i'd be able to kind of move in that direction um but i don't know we're gonna see what happens because this new job seems pretty cool so cool 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 things so So, um all 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 the people starting out there in the in the us especially like what kind of salaries can they expect when they are starting out um, their their careers obviously it will depend like the location for example some someone from la or someone for, from san francisco is going to be completely different or from new york so w- what kind of salary can they expect like when starting out uh so yeah the the, the biggest thing there's two there's two uh, pieces to that. The first part, like you said, is where do you live? Exactly. Because you know, um, you know, like seventy k sounds like pretty decent money, mm-hmm. but if you're living in like San Francisco, that's yeah. that's you're you're you are just not gonna make it. That's not gonna work. You know. Um, so it really does come to where you work. So for example, uh, so where where you work. So the first job, like I said, you really aren't concerned with the the money you're like you just you just want to get your foot in the door like you said you want your foot in the door you want to get that experience so you can go somewhere where you can ask for better pay where you can ask for better benefits or whatever it it happened Um, to me is uh, this exactly you know my first job in web development they 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 were not paying like the best but i was like okay they're not paying me the best but at least i'm gonna get my foot in the door i'm gonna get the experience and then after i can just jump to another another one that is going to be better for me Right. I mean, you should really think about it in the sense of like, think of it like in the sense of you are training, but you're being paid to train. Exactly. And that's really the way I thought about it. Is like, I'm like, you know, I'm like, same thing with me, man. I was not paid, like I know I was not being paid industry standard for my area, um, but I was like, you know what? It's a little below, but it, it doesn't matter. You know, give me, give me some time with this. I am being paid to learn right now, and that's what I did. And I treated it like a learning experience, and because that's what, because that, that's the the truth. The truth is. If you're working a full-time job, not code-related, which I did, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you're learning on your own in the after hours or in the early morning. Exactly, and exactly. You know, and you're not being paid for that time. <laughs> exactly. So it, it's better you're at least somewhere where they're paying you to keep learning and hone your skills and then, you know, get more real application experience. Exactly, so. exactly. So, um, yeah. So, so, actually, sorry. So in regards to, to salary ranges, what people should expect um, your first job, you're you're not going to make minimum wage, so there, there's good there's good news on that. They they will give you definitely more than minimum wage. Uh, although I have actually heard some people actually say like they just got barely above it, um, which surprised me. But regardless, um, 
you will you will make more than minimum wage you may or may not meet industry standards what i would suggest doing is going to like glassdoor and looking up at jobs and they will show you a lot of times like the salary ranges for your area uh, a lot of places you can see like what they're offering is in your area for the job position and that'll give you kind of a good sense of what you can expect to make look up junior uh, junior web developer junior mm -hmm. front end junior back end or whatever and um, look at those those dollar amounts in your area and that kind of gives you an idea like okay all right starting at 60 okay starting at 40 starting at 80 starting at whatever um, you know uh, and don't and don't be upset if it's like it's like oh man it has me like down in like you know 30,000 it's like I, I don't know man. exactly, Just, exactly. That's where you live I'm I, sorry I, I ask I ask this kind of questions because I think it's like 70% of my uh, audience is like from the US so uh, most of them, they just ask like this kind of question. And, and since I live in the UK, it's uh, completely different. I, I don't know how to answer these kind of questions. So there, there is another question that uh, everybody asks is like, what's like the best job boards for them to go and look for um, web development jobs, you know? Yeah, I feel like I'm being so general because my answer is like all of them apply to everywhere, right? <laughs> um, I mean, so um, so you, you can apply to Indeed. Um, you know, the things like, uh, actually somebody contacted me from like, they found my thing on like, oh, was it uh, Monster or just something like that? And I was like, uh, like, oh, career builder. I was like, oh man, I haven't updated that in forever. Do, do, and this is like for the latest one. Do you, <laughs> I didn't realize. Use, um, do you guys use LinkedIn as well or not really? Yes. Yes. Uh, LinkedIn is actually, so So there's there's things like Craigslist. There's actually some, some like mm -hmm. that. Uh, like I said, there's definitely Indeed is a big one. Um, I also Googled some like tech exclusive ones. Um, but yeah, so, um, sorry, I lose my train of thought. You just mentioned uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is great. Um, I've had some, uh, some recruiters contact me through LinkedIn, like, oh, I saw your stuff, whatever. But same kind of issue where sometimes the recruiter contacts you like, hey, I thought that you'd be great for this job. And I look at the job description and I'm like, you clearly did not read anything about me because this has nothing on my profile other than the word computer in it right. so um yeah so i know link, link linkedin is like recruiters love linkedin um so that's kind of cool uh you'll, you'll get you'll get some offers from from linkedin as far as people talking to you and you might get to like that next stage of the interviews and stuff but uh i don't know recruiters i haven't had any real success with as far as getting further along I've actually gotten better like on my own for things I've applied to um, and then just a just a little tidbit for anybody who does end up getting to those sort of final stages with uh, a company the recruiters put together with you the recruiting company makes good money off of off of you so if you're negotiating a salary and you know you're asking for like 60k and they're like yeah yeah we can definitely do that it's because they're probably going to be selling you off uh, to the company at about you know eighty to hundred k, exactly. um, and and they're making that that profit difference. So that's just one thing to to think about. And so typically with with those kinds of things, you can negotiate even more, because the reality is is that what they're going to going to the customer with is going to be more, um, much more than what you're probably asking. So inflate your price a little bit. And worst case is they, they bring it down a little bit. They're like, oh, well, we can come down to here. So. <laughs> exactly. So th this is something that you can really negotiate all the time. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, would, I would say definitely for your first job, um, one of the most important, well, yeah, like money can't be the, the most important thing because like I said, you won't have a lot of negotiating power. Um, but a, a really good tactic in regards to this, just because, you know, it's important. You got bills to pay, right? <laughs> um, one, one, one thing that I, I use is um, they would say, look, how much are you looking for? And then I would, I would tell them. And then you could see in their face sometimes they're like, uh, right? Yeah, or or like, yeah. something like that. But they would say, but, uh, you know, that, that's open to flexibility depending on uh, benefits, right? And then they're like, oh, well, we offer benefits. <gasps> oh, okay. Well, just, just be frank with me. What, what were you thinking? And they will tell you closer to the ballpark of what they were thinking. And and then at that point, you can be like, 
Oh, well, see, I didn't. I, okay, well, you guys have the you guys have the health benefits. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. Okay, yeah, I can. You know, if we can go a little bit, a little bit, maybe more than that. Um, you know, I can maybe make it work. Right. Uh, you know, but you do have the benefits. So I guess that kind of does offset things. I didn't know that. I was I was thinking that I didn't have any benefits. You know, and that seems to work pretty well as far as I'm going. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. You know. <laughs> so. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so um, uh, I just have like a few questions left now. And um, one of them is, do you believe that uh, people, they can become um, web developers like ready in three months? Like they, they have the... the yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> they, they, um... they have like the, the necessary skills, like the, the skills that you need to get your foot in the door in three months. Do you think it's possible? Because this is talked a lot about everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With like the boot camps and everything. So here's the thing. I would say yes and no. Uh, so, so, okay. Here's here's why I say that. Um, first of all, it depends on where you're at in life, right? So like, if you this is what I tell everybody. Like, if you are fresh out of high school, right? You don't have like a career path or whatever. Yeah, you could learn in three months. Take take from when you graduate. Treat it like a full-time job and just start learning on your own. Start learning to code for three months straight. Treat it like a full-time job and then some and just be on it. Because even with the boot camps, what I would argue is the reason the boot camps uh, will at least get you that like basic basic spot in there is really from what I hear is like you're spending 60, 80 hours a week in these boot camps. Really what that is, man, that's that's practice time. That's the same time you and me were doing on our own exactly. with a full-time job spread out. That's why it took so much longer. But I'd be willing to argue that if you took all of that time that was throughout the year, you put it together, together, it's, it's probably closer to three months. Yeah. So, yes, you can. But unless you have the ability to take three months off to just – go to town and work nonstop. Exactly, like, full, like treating like a full-time job, like you said. You have to treat it like a full-time job to, to learn. Otherwise, you know, you can't say like, oh, I have a part-time job or full-time job and I'm going to get a, a coding job in three months. You just don't have that. You just you need more time in the code, you know. And it's, once again, it's stupid stuff like configuration, right? Like, you know, I didn't, so when I started learning code, I actually was working another job part-time or sorry, full time, but like in between, I was doing some call uh, insurance stuff, and in between, I would be I would, didn't even know what a um, text editor was. I didn't know that existed, right? <laughs> exactly. So I was literally using Notepad, like Notepad, Notepad, and so what I would do is I'd write the code and then I just drop it in the Google Council and and run it and see if it worked. And I was copying and pasting this code and emailing it to myself in Notepad, which you know, mm. there's there's no way of knowing when you like forgot a semicolon exactly, or, or anything. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's silly, but yeah, um, you definitely need you definitely need some time just to kind of be aware of, you know, configuration, setting up your computer, learning the basic software, learning some of your hotkeys, um, and then obviously just actually learning and just being familiar with words, terms, and and all of that. You should be comfortable using the word concatenate. Right. I like you. I like around people who don't know how to code. I love using concatenate. Like, oh, because well, if they don't know what is concatenate, <laughs> it it's like, like, yeah, it sounds so fancy. It's like, oh, no, it's just this word plus this, this, this word. You know, when you're, when, you're, when you're putting two strings together to what, you know, like, ah, I feel so cool. So I, I, I completely agree with you. It's like people, people who are starting out and if they really want to, um, to learn, like be job ready in three months, they have to treat these like, uh, like like a full time job exactly because even even for me for example when I was working in this coffee shop that I was making sandwiches you know for me it took me a year like to learn from when when I started until I got like my first job it took me around a year to um, to get the job because I was coming out from work I was starting at five in the morning until almost three in the afternoon I was coming home like wow uh, i don't have energy yeah. and that's why you know it's, it's very hard if you are working a full-time job and still learning on the side it takes you a bit more time because this is all energy and motivation everything <laughs> together but yeah it's completely doable like 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 yeah. it happened with me and with you and uh, with more people so um 
And like I said, like it, it all depends on your situation. You know, if you've got the savings, you could take the time off. It's a good, it's 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 fine. It's a good investment. If you, I say, if you're fresh out of high school, if you're living at home, yeah. go for it, man. You don't have any real bills. That's the time to do it. Um, but and things change too. Like you know, for me, I started this when um, I uh, I got a, I think it was when I was engaged. That's when I kind of like started looking into it, and you know you start thinking like, okay, well now you have, you're splitting your time. It's not just you, right? You got time with your wife. And if you have a baby, okay, you got time with your family, your your, your wife and, and son or, you know, whatever. So you want to obviously spread that time out because when you're, when you're living by yourself, like when I was living on my own, it's one thing to be like, yeah, I come home, I'll just stay up late, exactly. work, right? You need to Get balance. Up. You need to balance the time between you and your family, obviously. Yeah. You so can't and depends like on your schedule. Spend all your free time just coding or anything. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely difficult. You know, I I'm glad that I got in as much as I could before before my first uh, before my first son because, yeah. Oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> it, it was it's like oh man, does your time schedule change? Exactly. So, um. But yeah, but definitely, I'm just saying, if you do have a kid, you can still learn to code. Just <laughs> you're, you're gonna have to figure out a schedule that works. You know? So, so <laughs> what, what kind of advice would you give like to people who are starting out right now? They don't know okay. anything like what is a code editor, what is HTML, CSS. They don't really know nothing. You know, they are starting out. They say, okay, I want to make a career change. I want to get into web development. Where should I start? What what should I do? Because I'm I'm completely lost. I don't know what to do, Chris. So <laughs> that dude, tell me that was like that was totally my experience too. Because first of all, you're like okay, you, you make the decision. All right, I'm gonna give this a shot. Okay, there's like a hundred languages. What are frameworks? What are libraries? What are all these things? You know, um, and, and you don't even know what any of it means either. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing I would suggest. First of all, I think my personal opinion is I think anybody can code, but not anybody should. So the, the, the thing is, is I think that it is a creative field. It, it is a field that involves learning. It is a field that, you know, is going to challenge you. And if you don't like it and you're just doing it because it's like, oh, there's job security and it's, it's you know, good pay or something, um, you're not going to like it and you're not going to make it far. Because you have to be passionate about it because you're going to have to learn. Like, you know, you said, like, you, you, you're learning all the time and you have to look stuff up on Google. So you have to enjoy it. Um, so what I would suggest is going to Codecademy.com and just doing the free stuff and just, you know, doing some of their, their, their little tutorials, right? Just try out and see if it's even fun to you, if it's even interesting to you. And if you're like, you can be having, you can have a hard time with it. You can be like, oh, this doesn't make sense or whatever. But the point is, is, is it interesting? Do you enjoy it? Like, oh, that's cool. Like, you know, this, these words appeared or, mm -hmm. you know, that's cool. Like, I didn't realize that's how, like how a loop works or whatever. Like if you find it interesting, then, okay, progress on to the next step. Um, to which uh, there's um, essentially a, a ton of resources on YouTube, hundred percent free. Right, you gotta love YouTube for all its free content. Um, actually, you you actually just started posting some tutorials for like HTML and CSS. Yeah. So um, so there's a ton of resources, tutorials online. You can you can go to Tomo, you can go to Tomo's <laughs> <laughs> YouTube channel. Um, and, and really, uh, so once once you've checked out some of the free stuff you, and you read about that and um, figure out essentially where do you want to go, and it might change. You know, I thought I was going to go straight into mobile app development. That's kind of where I was kind of messing with things a little bit in the beginning, and then I've kind of changed. Um, you know, your your direction might change over time, but what I would say is try and figure out, okay, do I want to work in video games? Do I want to work on websites? Do I want to work on web applications? Do, you know, kind of figure out an idea, mm -hmm. and then from there, Google how to build a web application, how to, you know, and then you'll start to see re repeated words. You'll start to re see repeated JavaScript, Node, React. You'll see the same words over and over. That's what you're shooting for. That's what you're trying to learn. Um, so I would say, you know, really kind of figure out the direction you want to go. Because, you know, some people who watch your channel may not be going for development. They might be going for things like, I want to build an iPhone app. Exactly. You know, okay, well, that thing's very easy, right? Because, okay, learn Swift. Um, and um, 
so so yeah so that's that's kind of what i would say is if you're if you don't know where to start essentially find the direction you want to go google it um and then also just just check out code academy and actually see if you even enjoy it before you start spending money on it i would say you don't need to spend a lot of money to learn um my my opinion is yeah there are there are boot camps there are you know college i don't suggest college um but there are different options out there that cost a lot more there's things like Udemy, uh, Code School, uh, Team Treehouse. They are all way cheaper. And even if you try to be extravagant in your spending, mm-hmm. you could definitely have more than your college degree or equivalency for far, far less. You can do it on your own. Exactly. A lot of them have access to the teachers. So I don't think there's a, there's a, a reason to, to spend you know, thousands of dollars, especially – especially when you really don't know if that's if, if that's where you where you're going to end up going exactly so i i completely agree with what you said you know <laughs> because people people they, they were just like all the time they think for example if you're starting to learn in um in a website like for example treehouse or something i started in treehouse maybe in 2014 or something and the price is still the same you know but what you pay in there compared to what uh, you would pay, like for example, in the uni, if you're gonna pay all these fees, I, I think in the, I, I don't know how much is in the US, like per year, it's like 10,000, 40,000, I don't know how much is it. Dollars. Oh, 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 uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and the funny thing too is, I mean, even things like, like Udacity and stuff, like they also have free courses on Udacity. Yeah, it's completely free. That you completely can actually free, look. yeah, yeah. Because, so yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is this is a good website. I should be watching yeah. the free ones. Because because I did I did the um, front end nano degree in there and all the video classes they are completely for free, you know. Basically what you are paying for is just like the projects and the, the access to the forum where you where you talk with other students and uh, you have like one or two times a month that you can like meet up with a mentor that you can do a video class like this for an hour. So yeah, basically this is what you are paying for. And yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and, and don't get me wrong, like the time with another developer is huge, right? Like when I was learning how to how just to use Git, because you should learn how to use Git, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so for everybody out there. Um, so when I was learning how it works and didn't quite understand it, my friend who's a software engineer, he like showed me on paper and he explained to me and I was able to ask him specific questions and like 30 minutes with him was like hours of research on my own. It was a huge difference, like how how much stuff got in there. Um, you know, meet other developers, uh, go, go to meetups. That's actually a really good idea if you can go to uh, like some meetups because then you can meet other developers, you know, you, you make some new friends and you, you'll see about things in the industry. And you know, I was watching like what I was doing when I was learning code because I was working the full-time job. I was just trying to, and I still do this actually. Like, I don't really play video games as much as as much as somebody else because coding is now my video game. But like, <laughs> you know, watching videos or listening to podcasts, whatever, just absorb as much content as much as you can, because you start to hear, even if you don't know what the heck it means, you start to hear the same words over and over and over, and then you hear them in context, and it starts to make sense. And, you know, for me, that's one thing I was doing is I was listening to stuff that was like advanced JavaScript and I didn't understand what they were talking about, but I kept hearing these same phrases over and over. And then I heard about, you know, keep using the word variable. You know, what is, what does that mean? They keep using the, you know, the word syntax. Like, what does that mean? Exactly. And, and that, that kind of silly stuff, it ends up making a, a big difference. It's kind of like learning a new language where if you just drop in like eventually stuff starts to stick. More importantly, the most important stuff starts to stick Mm -hmm. and you start to learn real quick, so. Cool, cool. Uh, So um, now uh, we just have like one last question. It's just like about your uh, YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, so about now, uh, what what are your plans now for the future for your uh, YouTube channel? What you want to do, what you plan to do? Yeah, sure. So, um, so it's 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 interesting because I've kind of been figuring out who my audience is. Um, when I started YouTube, this is basically why I, I I did it. I did it for a couple of reasons. And actually, if you're a, a new developer and you want to record your journey, I would suggest doing it. But here's here was my kind of train of thinking. 
So I was basically thinking it in regards to I wanted to make a uh, web web appearance, and I wanted to make myself more easily found. So um, what I did is like, okay, I'll start recording these videos because I was trying to find somebody like myself. I like, you know, there's all these veteran programmers, all these people who have been in the field for you know, a good amount of years. They know what they're talking about. I was trying to find somebody who was um, didn't know what they were talking about, new to the field, you know, new to code and all that kind of stuff. And because the way I'll communicate certain things is, you know, I don't I don't know everything yet, but I certainly you know, know more than somebody who knows nothing. Exactly. And sometimes you want to hear from somebody who's like, you know, I, I, I've got a few months on, on somebody. Oh, cool. All right. Well, and I think it makes it a little bit more relatable because, you know, if, if I've, you know, I started it when I was still definitely like just learning uh, stuff. And um, when you're, when you watch somebody who's still learning, I think it's, it's much easier to, um, be like, ah, I, I, I can relate to that guy. I, I know him. So, um, but yeah, so as far as my channel, um, I, I'm still going to try and keep it with that. I, the idea I currently have, which I talk about entrepreneurship. I talk about um, kind of what I'm experiencing in, in my field, um, things that interest me, just general questions for anybody who's new into code, new into development, or just kind of just some fun ideas. Um, I, I actually, when I started, like, I was like, do I just to do tutorial videos, this and that. But for me, I was like, there's a lot of tutorials out there. I don't know if that's the route I want to go. Plus, I didn't feel very confident in mm -hmm. what I knew at the time. So, um, <laughs> Even for me, for example, now that I'm doing like these kind of tutorials, uh, it, it's kind of hard because you know, you know your stuff and everything, but it's so hard like to explain, you know. And <laughs> since, for example, I, I was like, okay, I know that I'm bad at this. I'm just starting out doing these kind of tutorials, but in the future, who know, I can, I can make my own courses or whatever. So I will just get some practice doing some, some free courses, whatever little I know, I will teach to everyone, you know, and uh, yeah, that, that, that's smart. And I'm, I was thinking the same thing too. Like I'm thinking like, I mean, maybe the thing is, is I think like, I'm not going to, for me, um, I don't think I, I want to do some stuff that is like a framework or a language. I think I'm more, I'm for me, I'm more interested in like kind of higher level concept things. So there's a, a really good Udemy course um, called JavaScript, the weird parts. And you almost don't code in it at all. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's much more I, a lecture. I, I, I know these, these uh, Udemy courses like from Tony. I think you did a video about it, yeah? Yeah, because it was so good. Yeah, this, this guy, I bought all the courses from him, you know. I, I bought it like maybe two years ago or something. I'm, I'm not sure, but this guy is amazing. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, you don't really, it's not like a step-by-step -step follow along. It's, it's just much more of a lecture, which really I, I feel there's not a lot of. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I was looking for specifically. So um, I liked what he did, and I want to do something alert. probably more like along those lines. <laughs> yeah, and so and and more recently, so here's the thing: you're talking about the future for me. So very recently, like literally the last couple of days. Um, so like I said, my background comes from animation, and you know, up until now, a lot of it for me with code has been like, okay, I got to understand what I'm doing. I got to understand why I'm doing it. I got to feel comfortable with what I'm doing and all that with the code, right? I feel I've kind of reached that point now. And now I'm in a position at a job that I really like. You know, I have, that, I have, I have what I'm looking for. Okay, cool. I've reached like this spot that I was, I was striving for when I started, as far as I'm concerned. This is where I was trying to get at. Cool. Now what I really want to do is really actually just uh, start taking my background in animation and all the knowledge I have about timing and spacing and just movement and all that and start changing myself uh, and changing my marketing and changing my brand to go more in that artistic, um, artistic developer direction. Because when I started my channel, one thing I, I wanted to get across was, you know, you can be creative, you can be an artist, mm -hmm. you can learn code because people tend to think, like we said in the beginning, like you have to be really, really smart and you know, super, super like analytical. There's a lot of creativity in code, and so now that I'm comfortable with it, now that I know how to use the tool, 
it's just a tool. I want to start incorporating more animation, more of this artistic vibe. And in, in the time following this video, my branding is actually going to start changing because right now my branding has been all about um, essentially getting credibility in the field, uh, getting established, getting the job. Right, because like when I got this job, I saw my other YouTube videos, mm -hmm. which is what I wanted. Cool, it served its it, it served its its kind of direction, and now what I want to do is start changing my approach so that it's it's much more about art in the field, um, specifically animation, specifically about how things come in, and kind of seeing where 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 the art and the code kind of overlap. And for me, that's like where the the uh, the really cool stuff. And there's just not a lot of uh, examples out there for it. And there's not a lot of people talking about it, and which is great because for me, like this is this is the direction I want to go. I saw I um, found a couple of um, developers who are like did some really inspirational stuff, and I was like, yeah, that's the direction I want to go. Yeah, that's this, where this I want to head. Yeah, this is really so. interesting because myself as well. I'm I'm before like starting these um, coding stuff, you know. I was as well just like an artist because my, my first two videos that I actually I have on my channel, I was like just like drawing because I, I, I still really like to draw and I did a lot of freelancing just drawing before and now I'm like thinking maybe I should do some kind of web design stuff, you know, like you, how you can make a logo or anything. And yeah, th this could be something that I, I would like to combine like art and web development as well. So, because there are not many channels out there with these, you know, and and right, and I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you go ahead. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I, I was saying that um, yeah, since there are not many channels out there, I believe that there is still a lot of people who like like art and they like web development. You you don't have to specifically just like one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think the the, the probably the common thinking process is you are one or the other exactly right that oh no you're an artist you don't you don't touch the code and you know and you'll probably and you see this too probably uh, where you are too you're probably starting to see a lot of the the guys who design the layout a lot of them are starting to start to learn the code ideally if they can get a candidate who knows both that's that's your prime candidate because it saves them money and ultimately it really helps too like you know this too right mm -hmm. if you know how a website is going to be built then it's much easier for you to build how it's going to look because you know um, you know we've had a web we've had websites where it's built strictly by graphic designers that don't know any code mm -hmm. and you know they don't know that there's some things that look really cool but it's impossible to build or code yeah <laughs> yeah it's just it's just like it's like mm, is it really worth this is it really worth this little divot right there like <laughs> i mean we can do it yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's it's really so much it's just like so, a lot of a lot of work to do a simple thing that you could just like yeah change right in photoshop it takes you a second yeah, in yeah. code it will take a few hours yeah <laughs> like, exactly so yeah, I, I I don't know. So and I think that I, I think that'd be a cool idea for you too, because I didn't I, I I saw that I didn't know your first first few videos were were art stuff. I, although I have seen like some of your your thumbnails have like you know like a drawing or something, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he drew that. Yeah, because, I feel like he might have. Because my uh, my first two videos were just like drawings, you know, because I started maybe last year in the. Um, Inktober, it's called Inktober, like you, you spend like the whole month of October just like drawing. Just doodling. Yeah, doodling. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm, maybe I'm going to start a, U a YouTube channel with drawing stuff because I like to draw. I did a little bit of freelancing. I bought a Cintiq. Um, yeah. Dude, I got, my, I got my Cintiq right here, dude. <laughs> there you go, my Cintiq right here. Uh... Wow, you, so you use a Cintiq as well. Yeah. You've got the, yeah, you got yeah, the big you got one. A... <laughs> I think I the same. Oh, it's about the same size as I, I got the thirteen, the thirteen inches. So. Uh, oh, okay, it's bigger than that. Yeah. It's so, than, so, so yeah, I was like, I was, I was thinking that maybe I'm gonna do my channel about drawing, but then I started with web development, and I was, like, I'm gonna just like um, document everything about web development, and maybe in the future I'm gonna merge them together. So yeah. Yeah, I think it's totally okay for your channel to like evolve, like. You know, I, I mean, my, my channels already started changing. Like when I started, um, I, I did much more cuts. 
I did like some back and forth, black and whites. I I would change my pacing and, and I did all that because I still am working on how I enunciate and how I don't have all the ums, ahs, like, <laughs> while, you know, I'm still working on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, the, but my, my, my channel has had to change. It has to be content driven now because like I said, my, like time is, is a huge commodity that I don't have a lot of right now. So what ends up happening is I'm like, you know what? Screw it. One take. We're go, you know, recording, right? <laughs> and if it's in there, it's in there. And, you know, I apologize if I ramble sometimes. But... <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's like this. It's just like a process, you know. And the, the more videos you make, the more you get, like, comfortable. So it was exactly the same with me. When I first started out with my videos, I was like, wow, I... I don't feel comfortable talking to the camera and I don't know what to say. I don't know if people they will like what I'm saying or not. So it's just like a method of just like keep going and keep practicing and you will eventually get better, you know? Yeah. Yeah. My, my wife, my wife, it's so funny because she, she's always like, do you know you're not looking at the camera? Cause like, like I would have like the camera like up here and I'd be like looking at my like, oh no, no. I would have like this, this the, my other monitor, the, the TV. I, I'd be looking up here like, hi, yada, yada, yada. She's like, you know, you're not looking at the camera. I'm like, <laughs> ah. And so I had to get used to like talking directly into the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's it for, um, for this interview, Chris. Uh, I, I really want to thank you for uh for coming for coming here for uh, for this interview and to yeah to to have your time you know to answer the, all these questions for everyone out there and yeah thanks thanks for having me um youtube channel is uh code chris yeah i'll i, forgot, I'll, I'll I, just, I probably actually forgot to mention that <laughs> i'll just put the, the link down below first thing on the on the description so all of you guys that uh, you you want to check chris uh, channel i'll just put the link down below go and subscribe to his channel he has a lot of awesome content as well so yeah Thank, thanks a lot chris and uh, yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll catch you up next time maybe yeah yeah sounds good all right take it easy Tomo. cheers thank you